Now that you guys have already known the first two different fields of social work, which is the child welfare and the family welfare that the other groups have discussed, now we are going to proceed to talk about the next field. So good morning everyone, we are the group 3 and we are going to talk about the community welfare. But first, allow me to share to all of you the objectives of this report. First is to know the nature, focus, and characteristics of community welfare. Second is to know the roles and functions of social worker. And lastly is the agencies in community welfare. But before anything else, let me first share to all of you what does community and welfare mean. A community is a social unit composed with people living in an area or a group or groups of people who share common interests such as norms, religion, values, customs, or identity. While welfare is a government program for poor or unemployed people that helps pay for their food, housing, medical costs, and etc. It also means to aid in the form of money or necessities for those in need or an agency or program through which such aid is distributed. And to formally start a report, here is my groupmate and she will go into start the discussion and to be continued by the following reporters. Hello everyone, I am Mrs. Shane Antera and I will go in to discuss about the introduction and the nature of community welfare. Community welfare as a field of social work practice encompasses a variety of programs and services which have for their main goal the well-being of entire communities. Social workers in this field work with individuals, family, and small groups, and their concern is the provision of opportunities that would enable people in the community to work together towards common goals, particularly those that would bring about their common upliftment. Opportunities for direct work with communities in the Philippines are found in a wide variety of community development agencies and organizations, both urban and rural development, in public housing projects, in relocation and resettlement areas, and in work with cultural communities. Social work practice in all these settings involves not only the provision of needed community services and in the process cooperating and collaborating with various groups and organizations, but also organizing communities for their own problem solving. It is the last aspect which many social workers, particularly the younger and more recent graduates, find most attractive and challenging in community practice. This program is intended to assist socially disadvantaged communities in developing their capability in defining needs and formulating solutions as well as setting up viable community structures which bring about desired social changes. Community development was first defined by United Nations as the process by which efforts of the peoples themselves are united with those of government to improve the economic, social, and cultural conditions of the community, the aim of which is to integrate the community into the life of the nation and to enable it to contribute fully to national progress. A more recent and broader definition is that community development is a process designed to create conditions of economic and social progress for the whole community with its active participation and fullest possible reliance in a community initiative. Two essential elements in the community development process as defined are First, the participation of the people themselves in effort to improve their level of living with as much reliance as possible on their own initiative. Nature of community welfare. It involves raising of awareness of existing community needs and problems. It refers to effort directed at the facilitation of collective action of the community to respond to common needs and problems. It involves services, activities to enhance, develop, and mobilize volunteers to respond to the community needs and problems. Hi everyone, my name is Kathleen De Leon, and now I'm going to proceed to discuss about the focus of community welfare and to be followed by the characteristics of community welfare. Focus of the Community Welfare 
community welfare services or social welfare provision refers to any programs which seeks to provide a minimum level of income, service, or other support for disadvantaged peoples such as the poor, elderly, disabled, students, and paid workers such as mothers and other caregivers and underprivileged groups. Social welfare programs are undertaken by governments as well as non-governmental organizations or NGOs. Social welfare payments and services are typically provided free of charge or at a nominal fee and are funded by the state, benefactors, or by compulsory enrollment of the poor themselves. Social assistance comprises social benefits provided in cash to the population at large or segments of the population under schemes funded by general government or through taxation and without direct contributions to the scheme by or on behalf of potential beneficiaries. Benefits may be universally available such as pension paid to all population over certain age or to all people with a specific disability such as blindness. More commonly, beneficiaries have to meet other conditions. Examples of social welfare services and community welfare services include the following. Compulsory Superannuation Savings Program Superannuation or super is money put aside by your employer over your working life for you to live on when you retire from work. Super is a way of saving for retirement. Your employer must pay a percentage of your earnings into your super account and your super fund invest the money until you retire. Super is important for you because the more you save, the more money you will have for your retirement. Compulsory Social Insurance Programs It is often based on income to pay for the social welfare service being provided. These are often incorporated into the taxation system and may be inspirable from income tax. Social insurance is a set of insurance programs that are administered by a government. Just like private sector insurance, they provide benefits upon the occurrence of certain insured events. For example, unemployment insurance provides benefits if an insured person becomes unemployed. Additionally, just like private sector insurance programs, only citizens that contribute to a social insurance program are eligible to receive benefits from a program. Social insurance benefits are funded through payroll taxes. These benefits consist of monthly payments to qualified beneficiaries who have retired upon reaching a minimum age, are disabled and unable to work, or are qualified families of deceased wage earners. Benefits are, are not needs-based. Instead, a wage earner and her family is qualified so long as the wage earner has been employed for a minimum amount of time. Next is pensions or other financial aid including social security and tax relief. These are given to those with low incomes or inability to meet basic living costs, especially who are raising children, elderly, unemployed, injured, sick, or disabled. Social pensions are an effective way of reducing income poverty and other forms of poverty among older people. Pensions is a result of the retirement benefits of the elderly. The other, the financial aid, can thus contribute to poverty reduction by contributing to the growth, by providing direct benefits to the poor, and by supporting and financing increased social sector spending. While social security schemes are social insurance schemes operated by general government, they may be operated on behalf of the whole population or on behalf of specific segments of the population. Free or low-cost nursing, medical, and hospital care for those who are sick, injured, or unable to care for themselves. This may also include free antenatal and postnatal care. 
Services may be provided in the community or a medical facility. Sickness benefits provide income security in case of illness. They provide the realization of the human rights to health and to social security while supporting public health and the prevention of poverty. It expands financial protection and access to health services to all people. Protecting people from the financial consequences of paying for health services out of their own pockets reduces the risk that people will be pushed into poverty because unexpected illness requires them to use up their life savings, sell assets, or borrow, which destroys their future and often those of their children. Free or low-cost public education for all children and financial aid, sometimes as a scholarship or pension, sometimes in the form of a suspensory loan to students attending academic institutions or undertaking vocational training. Education is fundamental to development and growth. It is one of the strongest instruments to reduce poverty and improving health, gender equality, peace, and stability. It is a survival tool that we use to improve ourselves to become better in the society. Thus, free education is fundamental in guaranteeing everyone has access to education. Quality education empowers people and levels the playing field, which is one of the best tools for poverty elevation, social equity, and inclusive growth. If college was free for everyone, students from low-income families could attend. They would be able to pursue new things without worrying about their debt. With so many students attending college, it can lead to innovation that can change the world. The state may also fund or operate social work and community-based organizations that provide services that benefit disadvantaged people in the community. Welfare money paid to persons from a government who are in need of financial assistance but who are unable to work for pay. Police, criminal courts, prisons, and other parts of justice system are not generally considered part of the social welfare system while child protection services are. These are close links between social welfare and justice systems as instruments of social control. Those involved in the social welfare system are generally treated much like those in the justice system. Assistance given to those in the justice system is more about allowing an individual to receive fair treatment rather than social welfare. While being involved in the justice system often excludes an individual from social welfare assistance. Those exiting the justice system such as released prisoners and families of those involved in the justice system are often eligible for social welfare assistance because of increased needs and increased risk of recidivism if the assistance is not provided. Characteristics of Community Welfare Importance Welfare programs are usually funded by the taxpayers and enable people to overcome financial stress during the rough period of their lives. Mostly, people using welfare will get a bi-weekly or a monthly payment. The goals of welfare can be promoting work, education, or providing a better standard of living. Benefits of Community Welfare a social welfare system offers assistance to individuals and families in need with such programs as health care assistance, food stamps, and unemployment compensation. Lesser known parts of a social welfare system include disaster relief and educational assistance. The target beneficiaries are socially disadvantaged barangays. Poverty is a disgraceful and unjust condition that has always haunted mankind. Most people see the problem as insoluble. Millions of people are starving and forced to live a life in the absence of basic amenities. They do not have food, clothes, and homes to live safe and healthy. We need to assist those people who belong to social disadvantaged communities in order to escape poverty, 
for the reason also that they show slow progress in many areas of development like education and employment. Poor and inadequate nutrition also leaves children vulnerable to diseases and illness and can cause plant growth. Aside from the services that I have mentioned a while ago, there are also four other community-based programs that social workers engage with, and these are First is the social preparation for people's participation. It involves raising of awareness of existing communities' needs and problems. It refers to assisting the community to experience the process of building consciousness, awareness of problem situations, analysis, formulation of goals and action plans implementation, monitoring and evaluation collectively. Social preparation is also a series of activities designed to prepare the affected families to cope with the changes brought about by the government infrastructure or development projects and to encourage them to actively participate and prepare the societal, community, and personal responsibilities in their quest for tenurial security, human development and basic services, employment and livelihood, and other programs for the poor. Community Mobilization Service It refers to effort directed at the facilitation of collective action of the community to respond to the common needs and problems. Community mobilization is a process that aims to engage all sectors of community to prompt individual, family, and community action. It uses a variety of community engagement approaches to raise awareness and empower individuals and groups towards those actions, creating an enabling environment and effecting positive change. Community mobilization can include activities such as door-to-door -door outreach, public meetings, health fairs, participatory theater, and other activities. Importantly, Mobilization efforts are community-driven and community members are active participants in defining the problem, generating solutions, and evaluating the outcomes of those solutions. Community mobilization is important since it increases the capacity of a community to identify and address its own needs while generating local solutions to problems. For instance, because of its participatory approach, community mobilization ultimately strengthens and enhances the ability of a community to work together towards a common goal. Community Volunteers Resource Development It involves service or activities to enhance, develop, and mobilize volunteers to respond to community needs and problems. It refers to initiating, developing, and sustaining people's voluntary participation in responding to community needs and problems through knowledge-based and systematic service delivery system. Development of Community Welfare Structures It involves strengthening or organizing of viable structures that will respond to the community needs or problems. It refers to organizing, strengthening, or reactivating community welfare groups that will initiate community action and provide leadership in adapting measures to provide prevailing community social problems in an organized and systematic manner. Good day everyone! I am Angeline A. Dinawano and we will be talking about functions and roles of social workers in community welfare. The terms function and role are frequently misunderstood because some use them as synonyms. However, both differ with each other. So before we proceed, let me give you a brief explanation regarding the term function and role. According to the definition, function refers to the natural purpose of something or the duty of a person. For example, 
A social worker's function includes helping the people who are in need, restoration, provision of resources, and the like. On the other hand, role is a part played by someone in a particular situation. For example, social workers play the role of planning the activities, organizing, working with group, individual, and community. The social workers have various roles in community welfare. So the following are one of those roles that they have taken part. They help people find the community services they need such as legal help, medical attention, financial assistance, housing, employment, transportation, and more. They also give clients the information about social assistance programs. They help people in crisis and find emergency shelter services if needed. They also lead programs or workshops on life skills, substance abuse treatment, behavior management, youth services, or other issues. And they implement and organize the delivery of specific services within the community. Absolutely, the individuals and their families are supported by social workers and vulnerable people, including children and adults, are protected from any form of harm. The social worker's job is to aid in the improvement of people's lives as well as the wellness of the entire community. Aside from the roles of social worker that I have mentioned in the previous slide, the social workers have also been involved in the field of relocation and resettlement which is defined as the transfer of families usually from slums and squatter districts to another area and the provision of facilities and services in the next sites. Relocation from the word itself is an action of moving to a place and establishing one's home. Resettlement on the other hand, as defined by the UNHCR, as the selection and transfer of refugees from a state in which they have sought protection to a third state, which has agreed to admit them as refugees with permanent resident status. The relocation and resettlement are being implemented to protect the families in the community and provide them their specific needs. The role of social workers in this field is to empower the community's living situations, including compensations, access to livelihood opportunities, and social services, wherein social workers play their role as an agents and advocates of social change. Social workers are also involved in the field of tenement and housing projects, which are also considered as communities. So, tenement and housing projects involves the administration and implementation of programs which will preserve and promote family cohesiveness and stability, as well as community consciousness, self-reliance, and social responsibility. I assume that we are all familiar with tenement and housing projects. It is providing home to the refugees. Tenement typically refers to low-income housing units that are characterized by high occupancy and below average conditions. Most occupants of this tenement are, of course, those people who, who are vulnerable, who belong in a poor family or poor community. The goal of social workers in this community is to attain the maximum pos possible physical, economic, and social development of families and of the entire community using their own as well as outside resources. The venue of this line of work is usually the community center which is designed to provide certain community services and facilities to meet the needs of a disorganized community like a tenement housing project and to facilitate efforts for the development of community interest and responsibility. Just like the relocation and resettlement field, social workers' roles in this field is to help the people in this community in improving their lives, their environment, and community in general, wherein there are provisions of social services and programs which will contribute to the development of the community. Many of social workers help countless settlers in such well-known relocation sites as Bago Bantay and Bagong Pag-asa in Quezon City, Camarin and San Gabriel in Novaliches, Sapang Palay in Bulacan, San Pedro Laguna, Carmona and Desmarinas Cavite. 
So these are the relocation sites wherein the social workers are being involved. Functions of social workers The social workers have different functions in community welfare and in the resettlement and relocation field, their tasks include helping families prepare for relocation, helping families cope with and adjust to the changes that go with the relocation and resettlement, involving the people in the efforts to develop their conditions in the resettlement sites, identifying and developing local leaders, helping develop local organizations, promoting or facilitating the coordination of community groups and organizations which are all trying to work for the well-being of the relocated families. So the above mentioned only showed us that the social workers need the participation of the clients in building a well-functioned community that aside from the social services, the client's efforts are also asked for the development and wellness of all people. Lastly, the provision of certain social services needed by the relocated families such as food, transportation assistance, daycare services, counseling services, family planning services, skills training and job placement, and the like. So in a broad sense, social workers are in charge of ensuring that refugees have access to basic necessities such as food, water, and shelter. In addition to that, social work for refugees is primarily concerned with identifying and managing the social and emotional concerns that arise as a result of resettlement. Moreover, social workers' function in this community is by serving and providing the people a social services. Functions of social workers in the field of Tenement and Housing Projects The activities of social workers in tenement housing projects include discussing and identifying community needs and problems, defining the community-based programs needed, stimulating the active participation of all elements in the community, identifying, training, and developing local leaders, assisting the community in organizing or undertaking services not offered by existing agencies, administering and supervising specific community projects, linking up the community with available outside resources, and lastly, providing or facilitating the provision of other needed social services. So according to Putter in 1963, the state of our world are consists of low-income families, unskilled seasonal laborers, families with emotional problems, and etc., with poverty as the root cause. Thus, the government provided a tenement and housing projects for the welfare of the people. Further, the function of social workers in this field is to provide help to tenants who are in need of social services. Social workers should engage in a long-term plans to set up a comfortable community that is away from any form of harm, including developing local leaders, providing social services and programs, and assisting the community in general. Hence, the community they are working with will be socially functional. Indeed, community social workers assist in the functioning of communities. Some of them work directly with people, assessing their needs and directing them to local services. Therefore, social workers extend their helping hand while maintaining their professional relationship with their clients and act as guides and advocates to achieve change in the community and function well according to their professional practice and responsibility. Hello everyone, my name is Nicole Indrina and the next topic that I will discuss will be the agency in community welfare. So let's proceed the agencies. First agency, the Philippines Rural Reconstruction Movement, PRRM, founded in 1952 by Dr. Y.N.C. James Yen, has established a name for its effort to improve the living condition of people in rural communities. So, 
The PRRM, the contribution is in size, the participation and an integrative program of livelihood, health and nutrition, education and training and self-government. So, this agency is PRRM is to help communities with problems of poverty, illness, health, ignorance and apathy. So, in the PRRM, we vision a world of equity and sustainability. The the future is one where society is free of ignorance, poverty, disease, and powerless. So, and development take place, place within the government's caring capacity. So that the PRM, the mission is to enhance the capacity of rural communities in the planning, advocacy, and implementation of sustainable development. So through an integrated program of education, livelihood, health, habitat, environment, and self-governance. So next is the Philippine Business for Social Progress, PBSP, which is private enterprises implementing arm for social developments. So it's the largest business lead NGO and operates a nexus of corporate citizenships. Sustainable development poverty reduction. So the purpose of PBSP is we are united to end poverty so the vision is to lead the business sector's efforts to reduce poverty in the philippines so that the mission of pbsp is committed to poverty reduction by promoting business sector leadership in and commitment to programs that lead self-reliance next is administration on aging aoa the eoa develop policies plan and programs that promotes the welfare of the elderly so it's also support a nationwide aging network that provides services to the elderly so that the purpose of aoa is to provide leadership and expert expertise on programs advocacy and initiatives affecting older adults and their caregivers and families so working with and through the um, national aging network AOA direct grant programs and promotes development of coordinated system of home and community-based care of older adults and their caregiver as under authorized under the American Act and other legislation. So, so that the vision is that every older adult, adults with disabilities, and their family member have access to information, programs, and services to help them thrive in the setting of of their choice. So. The mission of AOA statement to promote the independence, choice, well-being, and dignity for persons age 60 and over, adults with disabilities, and their families through a comprehensive, coordinated system of home and based community services. Next is Health Resources and Services Administration or HRSA. The mission of HRSA is to assure the availability of quality healthcare to low-income, uninsured, insulated, vulnerable, and special needs population. So, so that HRSA is focuses with improving the health safety need by providing access to healthcare for those who are uninsured, isolated, or medically vulnerable. So that the vision of HRSA is healthy communities healthy people so that the mission is to improve health and achieve health quality through access to quality services and skilled health workforce and innovative programs so last is substance abuse in the mental health services administration or sam hsa so, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration is the HSS Health and Human Services Agency that focuses on the prevention and treatment of substance abuse and mental disorder. So, leads public health effort to advance behavioral health of the nation and to improve the lives of individuals living with mental and substance use disorders and their families. So, Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, it has vision and mission. So the vision is to provide leadership and resources, program, policies, information, and data funding, and personal advancemental and substance use disorder prevention, 
treatment and recovery services in order to improve individual, community, and public health. So, the mission is to reduce the impact of substance abuse and mental illness. Service support effort for ending and preventing homelessness among people with mental and or substance use disorders. That's all.